can you tell us more about traumas that how does it look like and how many types of traumas are there um well you know there are many types i'll start with the types of trauma there's a trauma where you cut your finger huh? but you haven't sliced it off and so it bleeds a little bit and we might cry or we go ow or we feel some discomfort then there's trauma such as uh, a parent parent <laughs> Welcome back guys to our show and uh, today we are going to talk about systemic coaching and uh, like trauma there are a lot of things that we are going to discover today in this session so make sure to watch the session till the end and without wasting any further ado let's get started so zita how are you how are you doing today hi chitan i'm good it's lovely to see you thank you for having me thank you so much for your time this was uh, like we are going to go very deeper into like trans generational trauma and systemic yeah. coaching as you are a systemic coach the first thing that i want you to tell the audience that is what does this term means what is this exactly what do you mean by this well traditional coaching tends to look at you in isolation as an individual who comes in to meet with a coach and sit down and you'll look at the issues that you're facing the difference with systemic coaching is that we look at the you as not not only just an individual but as somebody who's a member of a family a community a religion a country a culture you were born at a particular time in history and all of these factors influence your perception of the world and your experience of life and what uh, and in many ways it can inform your ability to agree to success in the sense of security and safety or right. it can sometimes rob you of it so that's the difference we're looking at the bigger picture and going uh, deeper yeah amazing uh okay so uh, we got a rough idea uh, like we got an idea about uh, this thing but before we get started i want you to like uh, introduce yourself in front of the audience they want to know about you they want to know who you are so can you please tell us about yourself okay so my name is zita tulia hikayo i'm a systemic constellations coach hypnotherapist and a facilitator of systemic constellations work. I'm based in London, the United Kingdom. Um, and I've been, well, I was born in England. I've been practicing as a coach and a therapist for ooh, almost 20 years now. Mm. Um, I started my, my first career was actually in fashion, working in America, um, supporting, you know, uh, pop stars and celebrities and so on and so forth to uh, look the part and um, dress well for their music videos or their movies or also working in commercials and doing um, fashion covers and photo shoots. So it was quite a change to come back to England and change a uh, career in what seems like quite a dramatic way, but um, it's proven to be really fruitful as exciting and interesting. And I actually still, a lot of the times, get to work with my previous clients from fashion and entertainment in the music industry. So it's really good to be able to support mm. high achieving people in a, a, in a really productive way. Okay, amazing, amazing. So from like how long you are into this? Like uh, uh, from how many years? Uh, so I qualified as a clinical hypnotherapist in 2005. Mm. And that's when I started practicing and I moved back to the UK. And then the training of coach and as a facilitator is ongoing. It never really ends. Um, so I train, I practice, I teach, I facilitate workshops. And, you know, I'm always keen and eager to get in wherever I can. So now I work not just with individuals, but I also work with uh, organizations, multinationals and uh, independent charities, all different sizes of companies um, and couples as well, because couples are actually a mini organization at the beginning of the family. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So yeah. you have a very good experience into this. So you are working with so many different type of clients, so many like you are working with organizations, couples and people from fashion industry. So 
have you find something common what is the common problem that most of the viewers or most of the pro uh, most of the people have in their life so did you get something like that yeah well basically what i'm looking at understanding is how people love or how they are loyal so we love our family even if we have fallen out with them or think we never want to see them again and we are loyal to the companies that we work for even if we complain about them and so on and so forth so sometimes the way we love has got a uh, a kink in it let's say and it's not supporting the best experience for us or the best experience for our relationships with other people whether that's with our family with our partner or in our organization so it's really about love or and loyalty mm, right it sounds simple but love is quite complicated sometimes how how it's complicated <laughs> well we can we can show our love for another person and our loyalty by saying and i'll suffer with you mm. which isn't necessarily the best outcome or that it doesn't produce the best outcomes or we can shift that to something like i love you so much i'm going to flourish and thrive and that would shifting the attachment of love or the expression of love in a way that's more productive for the individual or for the couple mm, right and it's the most powerful force so it makes sense to work with that right so as you're working with people into the trauma like most of the people have there are different kind of uh, traumas that people are facing in their life some are in their childhood somewhere in the relationships as you told us there are different ways of trauma so can you tell us more about traumas that how does it look like and how many types of traumas are there uh well you know there are many types i'll start with the types of trauma there's a trauma where you cut your finger huh? but you haven't sliced it off and so it bleeds a little bit and we might cry or we go ow or we feel some discomfort then there's trauma such as uh, a parent parents who lose their child that's an unnatural thing to happen for the child to die before the parents and that has a very profound effect because really the parents only job is to keep their children alive if they fail um, that is quite a devastating effect so we yeah. also count that as a trauma um, someone saying un something unkind or that you interpret is again sort of like a cut it hurts for a while and it maybe touches on a previous cut so it starts to feel like a trauma but it's really uh, a quite light trauma then a big traumas i would say are things like holocaust or genocide where thousands of families are erased or eradicated often in quite brutal ways whether it's a hammer to the head or the gas chambers or that kind of um killing on mass that is so disturbing to our sense of right and wrong that it ricochets through the family for multiple generations those are what the kind of traumas really that i'm looking at and working with and they mo they tend to manifest as childhood trauma because the parents are carrying something that they their grand their parents experience and then they pass that to their children which is an adaptation and behavior to compensate for the fear and the terror created by a significant trauma like the holocaust or genocide the holocaust still or genocide can you please explain this to the audience like what what, what does this term mean so the holocaust is uh, quite a significant moment in history uh, which was part of the second world war where the nazis led by hitler um, set out to exterminate or uh, destroy an entire group of people and they did everything within their powers to erase them destroy them um, persecute them exile them basically anything that they could do to annihilate them so they were often sent to gas chambers all, all kinds of horrible things to not only either erase them through killing but to destroy the psyche of the people. 
mm. so that it would be very difficult for them to go on. Genocide, uh, an example is the genocide in Rwanda, where uh, racial tensions between two groups who are both black set out to destroy another group. And in that instance, it was often uh, taking hammers or, or, or uh, other instruments and striking them in the head, smashing in their skulls. And I think in a very, that what it tends to be is a lot of killing in a very short space of time. So uh, with the uh, Holocaust, with the Jews, it was millions. And uh, people over, well, they say four years, but it extended beyond that. And there was trauma prior to that. The genocide, for example, in Rwanda, that was nearly a million people killed in about six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So these are the kinds of traumas that have devastating effects and ripple through. Um, but another kind of trauma uh, that affects millions of people every day is migration mm. you see, no one leaves their country of origin because life is going really well to yeah. haul themselves across the world so uh usually they're leaving because there's some kind of fallout or tension or they're seeking a what they hope might be a better life but in the process of migrating a lot of close family bonds are broken the country mm. of origin that's made our life possible is left behind. And we can't actually really do that without it having an effect. So it manifests as a trauma in that it, it changes the, uh, uh, the adaptive behaviors of the group or the individuals who migrate. Mm. And often we'll see that they bring that to the country that they then arrive in. Right. And Anything? that can affect their ability to succeed, or they may continue to identify as victim for an extended period of time. They struggle to integrate, so therefore they don't necessarily experience the benefits of what the new place has to offer. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Any kind of things that is disturbing you from inside, any kind of thing that is uh, disturbing your mindset, uh, I think that can lead to you to go into trauma. Yeah, I mean, uh, some things more than others, and also some people have more resilience than others. Um, we're not born with the same capacities or the same tolerance. So uh, those also can have an effect. So it's, but you, you, you can't really weigh and measure and say some things are significantly worse and horrific because they affect people even just knowing about the fact that they have happened. Mm. And that can create a trauma of collective shame where people don't want to actually really look or acknowledge uh, that these things have happened and that they have no power to change it. Right. Yeah. Zita, do you think like uh, there are some type of mental problems or trauma that people have in their life? Like they have faced something crazy, like as you told us that uh, losing your child, losing your uh, child before you die. So it's a big yeah. trauma. There is yeah. lots of things that happens in a people life that leads towards trauma. But sometimes what happens is that if you are just a child, you haven't seen anything. But deep inside, there is a thing that is coming up in your mind again and again. So do you believe in past life or something that is happening in your past that is coming again and having a mental blockages? Like, do you believe in something like that? Well, it's a very interesting and beautiful question because in my original training in hypnosis i very much worked with past life and past life regression and uh i think also from a personal spiritual perspective i was very interested in the concept of past lives yeah and if someone comes with that belief then i'm going to work with their belief system because that's the best way to access what's true for them yeah. but i what i'm now starting to think and understand is that the past life is really the uh, emotional memory 
pass through genetics from one generation mm. to another. So if you imagine that when your grandmother is pregnant with your mother, the cells that will become you are in your, gra are in your mother while she's in your grandmother's womb. So the emotions, thoughts and feelings that your grandmother has are already affecting the cells that will become you. Yeah. And we can therefore experience this as what seems like a past life, but it may mm. be our grandmother's life. Right. So two things can be true at once. It's, it's just, a, from my perspective, a subtle shift in how we tell the story. Right, right, right. Totally makes sense. So, Zita, I'm uh, curious to know that you are dealing with lots of people. You have seen a lot of things in your life. Like, as you told us, there are some type of traumas. People cut their fingers. There's, the, It's very disturbing. It is like out of the box. Like, uh, most of the common people don't know about this phase of people, No, don't know about this thing that is happening. So, in your journey, do, have you faced any type of uh, like any clients comes to you and the problem that they told you was very like disturbing you were like wow what is that like this is like different from others we want to share some of your experiences oh that's a very interesting question i mean there are there are times when somebody comes in because i live in london which is a a really multicultural, diverse city. Um, and, you know, we have waves and waves of immigrants coming from all around the world, usually yeah. and often as a result of uh, trauma. So there will be groups. Uh, so uh, recently, what I started to notice, for example, I know quite a few Lebanese people. There's a large Lebanese community. There are lots of Lebanese restaurants and you'll meet the people and they're so lovely and super sweet. And everything seems really nice and together. And then as we see now, uh, uh, there's a disruption in the Middle East that's broken out between Israel and Palestine, but it affects the people of Lebanon. So now mm. their trauma is surfacing, but it's not in the news. We're not talking about it because no one is thinking about the adjacent countries that are affected by a conflict in one particular area. So I was, I have been in recent weeks quite surprised to see that effect and the number of Lebanese people now coming, saying something's going on, I'm feeling terrible, I'm really struggling with such and such and such. So Lebanese people and then also Syrian people and people from Jordan. So that was something that I hadn't really encountered before. Um, similarly, uh, I remember a few years ago, uh, I knew about the partition uh, and, the, the, you know, the history of that uh, dynamic in India, but I'd always thought it was just between Muslims and Hindus. Then I started seeing a lot of women who are Sikh and from the Punjabi coming and I was like, oh, I, I, you know, they don't teach you in school really that those places and those people are affected as well. So it's what's I think what it is, is the nuance that mm. of people who are affected, which the bigger stories that we get in the news or that people might talk about and focus their attention on, it's the spaces in between where a lot of people get lost in the story. Similar with slavery, it's always perceived as being a black and white story. You know, the white people bad and the black people are the slaves, but there are multiple other communities that were impacted by slavery and aren't acknowledged. So there are a lot of Gujaratis who were bought as slaves after slavery technically had ended. No one really talks about that. Yeah. So those were those are instances where I was sort of surprised. And um, you know, it's wonderful when people who have been affected by slavery in that way do come. And it's usually the ones who we uh, collectively as a society tend to ignore right. they, don't, they don't get the attention and the support mm. but often people with quite profound collective trauma have no voice yeah. right it's right and uh, 
like you have done a very good research about all those things i think you like do research about uh like what is happening and stuff so amazing you have a very good knowledge into this thing so uh like zita let's let's talk about uh the systemic coaching that you told that you are providing to the people and helping people with that how systemic coaching is different from the traditional or the normal coaching that is happening in the world so how you are different how this coaching is different well i think for me and the way i practice as coaching whether it's working with executives mm. or or the, you know whoever it is that comes is that traditional coaching doesn't look at your past it doesn't look at where you've come from it doesn't look at those circumstances that right. are having such a huge impact on how you think and i right. do that which is traditionally in the realm of therapists but i'm looking at that from through the therapist lens and then once we've worked that then we can bring in the coaching aspect to start to look towards the future so it's kind of really a panacea or panacea for your whole the arc of your whole life rather than just uh you know change your mindset you can't change your mindset until you change your heart mm. right so i work with supporting what the heart and soul of the person needs first and then we get a much fuller clearer sense of their purpose and where they're actually really going to go for them not out of a secret loyalty i've got to succeed because daddy wants me to i must succeed because the women didn't do it before it becomes quite a different story and it's a richer one that um, becomes seamless almost effortless because it is our our destiny mm. or our fate right um it's totally true so azita from destiny there is a question that arrived in my mind that is that you are from 2005 you are helping people right now you are in a very good stage you are you have done lots of talks and worked with different organizations you have done a lot of things what's your destiny where you want to reach in next uh, few years uh, like what is the goal that you have in your mind well um I'm kind of bound a little bit to secrecy because I'm just in the process of signing some contracts uh which I have been waiting a very long time for them to arrive but they are yeah. very exciting <laughs> I'm really excited uh and my family who know about these uh pieces of paper waiting for my signature are very excited so I think it's going to be um bigger better and more Mm. of the same thing but more uh you know we're at a we're at a pressure point where the traumas of the past are really building up in the collective system so we're feeling and seeing this tension and it's manifesting in multiple ways with uh what some people want to call dismantling and discolonizing but actually we're going through a natural process of uh destruction and creativity so a lot of humans will be drawn to the destructive aspects of thinking oh i'm going to break this down and i'm going to destroy it and i'm actually very very interested in you know how are supporting people how do we create a really strong a uh, robust image of the future because we don't have that we have very mm. few leaders offering it and partly why is because they don't have the skills of uh, the systemic view where we can take diagnostic test what does what future helps humans what future helps this family what future is right for this organization so that's the best i'm really excited about mm. how do we evolve and create this healthy future in which more human beings can flourish and thrive <laughs> so that i give you the broad brush strokes of what's coming <laughs> right right so like i can see the passion in your eyes i can see that uh, you're very excited towards that and uh, like i love that like people are uh, like uh, people like you and all the people are helping people understanding the problems and giving them the coaching you are doing a great job amazing so zita just tell me one thing 
what do you love most about the work that you do like that helps you to jump out of your bed and like start working helping other people what is the most loved thing that you love in your work that you do well what i love really the most about it that's truest about it is it it doesn't dictate to yeah. you who or what or how you must be it just supports you to be the fullness of who you were born to be so it is in many ways the most truly inclusive way of uh coaching and supporting groups of people because it's very much supported by the belief that everything that exists exists for a reason Mm. you exist i exist and our unique qualities all have value and something to offer to the world and right. this for me is so refreshing because it's got nothing to do with saying oh tear down the elites or tear down the power or destroy this group it's nothing to do with that right and that that's what's so revolutionary and unique about it and is really that is rooted in a true love for humanity and respect for people and mm. that's what drew me to it because nothing else out there was really offering that it it sort of does it claims to but in its heart and soul it doesn't this work does and that um for me allows me to be comfortable in what i'm offering to other people not my version or what my idea of who or what you should be it's yours yeah and we're going to discover it together so that you can live it for sure you're yeah. amazing and uh, like as you are also helping people you are offering people your mentorship you are helping people with your coaching so can you please tell us more about your coaching program as well the viewers who are watching this video how they can be benefited from your like mentorship but i guess the thing that's quite unique about this coaching is that because it works so deeply there isn't really a program yeah you know yeah, it's like a lot of my clients come in once and they're done they're like oh my god i can't believe it and maybe i'll hear from them later or i'll see them on the tv or on the big screen and like oh okay that worked um so that's uh i guess what is unique about it some people do want to work more gently or they have multiple layers of deeper trauma and yeah. they want actually to learn the skills so they're coming to learn and understand this beautiful systemic work um and then i've i've started to create programs for women because you know there are a lot of women who uh feel they're struggling with imposter syndrome or they're struggling in a world which they believe is you know dominated by the patriarchy and so this program that i've created embracing your inner warrior really is designed for women to to find their own unique power and strength and mm. rather than just be empowered women they are women in power of themselves and uh you know when they graduate from that course they're just like oh wow and uh that's something that really excites me to see is women not complaining and whining about the state of the world but going out with their the force of their love and putting their energy into the world and agreeing to life so um and similar with my mentors i mean currently i don't have any because they've all graduated from oxford with first <laughs> <laughs> i'm like okay um and that's something that i did with my uh business partner um and you know he's a very talented uh barrister and lawyer and we coached some uh young women in to the legal profession and they're all doing incredibly well so i'm kind of lining up my next group so anybody out there <laughs> <laughs> amazing 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 so guys if you want to connect with sita just go to the link in the description i'm going to share their social media and the website that whatever you will give me i'm going to give it in the description so guys make sure to connect with her Zita, just the last thing. The viewers who are watching this video till now, they are very like, they are very serious about their life. Like, do you want to give them any a recommendation and advice? What do you think? Yes. Uh, 
question what you believe question yeah. yourself frequently if you say i believe this is true why where did you learn that belief where did it come from is it true and is it serving you or is it time to update that belief to something that more readily suits where you are right why should we challenge our beliefs because beliefs go out of date quite frequently and sometimes we can have a, a belief that suited us when we were five years old and you'll find a 30 year old walking around with the belief that they had when they were five and now they're 30 that belief isn't going to work anymore right right so, <laughs> you know and that's not a mindset thing that's a belief and you have in 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 establishing a relationship of inquiry with it you start to find out where that belief is and it might just say I don't want to hang out with you anymore. That belief is like ready to go and you're holding on to it, dragging it through life. And it's like, yeah. please leave me alone. And then as soon as you let it go, a, a, a new belief comes in and it's so much more robust and suited to who you are. Right, you know? right, right. I used to believe that uh, all everybody in the world who wasn't black was racist and it was just so crippling. And then I started to challenge my beliefs. And the more I challenged my beliefs, the more my life changed. Mm. And that, and it changed in quite a phenomenal way. Now, of course, other people I can't just say that to, but I do invite them to consider that not everything in the world is set against you because of the color of your skin. Right. Thank you so much, Zita. This session was amazing. We have learned a lot of things from you. Guys, the audience are very excited to connect with you. So guys, go to the description. Connect with Zita. Thank you so much, Zita, for your time. This podcast was amazing. Ah, uh, Tita, and thank you so much for having me. It's been really lovely to talk to you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much once again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah.